Um, so my name is Joy. I'm here from the HCI group at Stanford University. Um, so thanks for inviting me here today. Um, and I'd like to present to you um, the work I've been working on throughout my PhD program uh, on taking inspiration from expert creative practices uh, to design crowdsourcing strategies for supporting creativity. So platforms like Amazon Mechanical Turk and other platforms have made it possible for hundreds of people to come together to produce creative work at massive scale. So projects like the Johnny Cash Project asked workers to draw individual frames which were combined to create a reinterpretation of a music video. While other past work has looked at whoa, how to achieve more complex projects uh, by building workflows that allow crowd workers to build on each other's work. Um, so doing this makes a whole lot of sense because it's this breaking down of work into independent parts that allows crowdsourcing to be so good at achieving large, complex tasks quickly and at scale. And currently, crowds use a number of proven strategies to split up this work. Um, in many crowdsourcing systems, individual workers are encouraged to submit uh, independent submissions that may net them some kind of monetary bonus or other benefit of some kind if it's ultimately selected. Um, other systems divide the work into smaller chunks, uh, assigning them to workers with the intent of merging work together at the end. Uh, the Johnny Cash Project is an example of this, as is uh, other projects like Galaxy Zoo, Foldit, and other tasks where uh, a large amount of repetitive work, like data collection or labeling, needs to be done. And more recently, systems have explored more complex workflow styles that uh, resemble an assembly line. Uh, Soylent, for example, proposed a workflow pattern called Find, Fix, Verify, indicating three different tasks that could be done by different workers uh, in that order to together perform the task of copy editing text. Um, and research has even looked at how to get the crowd to create their own workflows based on given goals. And so all of these strategies require uh, predetermining a particular desired outcome. Uh, and prescribing to crowds exactly how to create that outcome. And this usually means that uh, using these strategies, crowd workers work very independently. Uh, any connection between these workers is usually in the form of work being passed from one worker to another, and this kind of limits the kind of work that we can crowdsource. So to compare, how do experts manage themselves when they create stuff? Um, oops. The creative processes that expert creators already use uh, may be an untapped source of reliable creative strategies that may help us understand how the crowd can influence the direction of creative uh, complex projects. So we know, for example, that experts continually create and revise constraints to develop purpose for their work. Uh, they reflect during practice. Uh, and they make use of existing patterns for solutions rather than reinventing the wheel. So in other words, uh, no expert creator is simply competing and voting with themselves like crowd uh, workers do. Um, they may create alternative solutions to a problem, uh, but rather than taking a solution wholesale, as you might, might see in a crowdsourcing system, experts often combine or modify solutions by taking the bigger picture into account, and they can even make the judgment call to start over and try a new approach. So what if we could get the crowd to also thoughtfully revise their work as they work? Um, if we can do that, we might be able to expand the ability of crowdsourcing to tackle even more complex collaborative projects. Uh, so my research uh, focuses on adapting expert creative practices into social computing and crowdsourcing environments in order to make these strategies accessible to a crowd of non-experts. So that is rather than breaking down work by splitting it into independent steps, maybe we should enable the crowd to follow a process that looks a little bit more like an expert's. Instead of doing creative crowdsourcing like crowdsourcing, maybe we can do creative crowdsourcing like creativity. So in this talk, I'll talk about three expert practices that I've been exploring through several projects. Uh, first, I'll talk about Ensemble, where I explored how leader-created constraints can help a crowd coordinate in writing short fiction stories. Then I'll talk about Mechanical Novel, where I looked at how to get the crowd to engage in reflection and revision uh, on their own, where over 200 unique workers were able to work together to write short fiction without a leader. And lastly, I'll talk about Mosaic, where I looked at how to design online creative communities so that they focus not just on showing off uh, final successes, but uh, on helping creators support each other while they work uh, and show how we were able to build up a community of creators that shared their creative processes with each other. Okay, so first, uh, Ensemble. Um, for this project, I looked at the expert practice of creating and revising constraints. So in Ensemble, we structure 
uh, crowd work around these constraints rather than a specific overall goal. Um, most of us are familiar with examples of how the crowd can produce incredible pieces of collaborative work. Um, but though the web has been able to create the great collaborative encyclopedia, it hasn't been able to create the great collaborative novel. And you would think that we'd be able to take a leaf from the book of one of the most successful crowd-powered systems on the web, like Wikipedia, and apply it to creative co uh, collaboration online. But um, a completely open collaborative system can make it hard for a group to decide on and adhere to a single creative vision. On the other hand, in highly structured approaches, uh, participants might build up a story piece by piece by adding a few sentences at a time. But without this ability to coordinate at a higher level, collaborators end up with incoherent patchwork stories that turn out more like wild improv games rather than a novel. Uh, so what can we do about this? Um, so from past research on how creativity works, uh, we know one thing that we can do is make use of constraints to limit and direct the search through a creative space for a story. So with constraints, uh, creative work can be made more manageable by reducing the space of possible choices. And this also makes sure that all the people working on the story are sort of brainstorming in the same areas of that space. Uh, and in addition, rather than following uh, some kind of linear process, uh, we also know that expert creators structure their, uh, or expert writers structure their writing around goals that, that they create and revise as they work. So what if we adopted these perspectives on using goals and creative constraints by putting leaders in charge of creating goals to direct work on a story and putting collaborators, uh, potentially the crowd, in charge of fleshing out the story with those goals in mind? So uh, based on that, uh, we decided to explore potential online collaborative storytelling strategies by building a tool called Ensemble uh, based on the hypothesis that the crowd and the individual have complementary creative strengths. Uh, so to this end, we uh, built a platform where individual leaders start a story by creating initial structures for stories using uh, mini writing prompts, which is where this idea of constraints sort of comes into play. Um, and then collaborators can focus on the type of work that they're good at around these constraints, um, brainstorming, proposing possible segments of writing, um, or even discussing potential solutions around this, this mini, mini writing prompt. The leader can then do things like choose a winning contribution or merge or edit existing contributions to better fit their overall vision for the story. So using this platform, the main question that uh, we wanted to ask was whether or not this division of creative responsibility would produce successful collaborations. Um, in particular, could the crowd support the writing process for a lead author? Uh, and to look at this question, we ran a month-long story writing competition. We uh, ran in collaboration with the creative writing department uh, at Stanford, where over 100 volunteer users from the web started almost 50 stories together. Um, and out of these, 20 were completed and submitted as entries into the competition. Um, and for this initial study, team sizes were fairly small, with a median of about two people working on each story. And we provided a prompt asking teams to write uh, a story about what happens to stolen bikes. Um, and we got a number of interesting stories, including a character study of a man who obsessively steals bikes due to childhood trauma, and a story where bikes try to escape their bonds and oppressors and journey to bike heaven. Um, and this was one example of uh, the prompts that leaders created, with this particular scene asking for details filling out uh, the introduction to the story. And as you can see, uh, contributors are conversing with the leader here about these high-level story details, but in general, people would also use um, comments on these to point out low-level issues like grammar and spelling errors, or to point out, uh, to notify other group members that they've made changes to the story. Um, and just to quickly summarize uh, our findings with this project, um, we found that on the leader side of things, leaders tended to maintain creative authority with half of their activity being spent revising paragraphs that they had written themselves. So in practice, this meant that leaders were kind of manually integrating ideas provided by others uh, in submitted paragraphs or through comments into the story rather than taking contributions as is. So in other words, uh, leaders were uh, interpreting contributions for that high level idea that was being suggested and then using them as examples and points of comparison while manually tweaking existing work. Contributors, on the other hand, were limited to writing comments or paragraphs in response to any prompts provided by the leader. 
Uh, and when they submitted paragraphs for the story, they were able to do so without overwriting other people's proposals for that uh, story section. And um, because of this, contributors could use this as a safe way to show rather than describe their idea for the story. So as one participant put it, it was harder for them to describe what they wanted to do rather than to just do it. So in this way, uh, and someone unexpectedly, this um, feature that we had meant to facilitate low-level merging of writing work was instead used as a way to kind of clearly communicate high-level ideas. So to summarize, we saw that leaders played the role of merging work in order to make it possible for contributions to add to each other, rather than having to compete against each other as in traditional crowdsourcing workflows. Uh, and since Ensemble worked with smaller groups, uh, our next question was to ask whether we could achieve a similar collaboration with larger teams. So that thought sparked the creation of the next project I'm going to talk about, uh, Mechanical Novel. So here, rather than using leaders to guide collaborative work around constraints, uh, we looked at how we can get crowds to take on that leader role from themselves while writing short fiction stories. Uh, so for Ensemble, major bottleneck was the leader who had to coordinate contributions. Um, looking at everything coming in is a huge burden for one person, and leaders told us that coming up with constraints was sometimes difficult for them. So the question with Mechanical Novel was, uh, how can we get crowds to monitor their own progress and adjust their work accordingly? Uh, like I mentioned earlier, existing crowdsourcing systems usually break down complex tasks by splitting them into independent parts that you can piece together later or by using a workflow to build on a task, step by step. But this means that these systems can't crowdsource work that has mutually interdependent parts. So for something like a story, changing the name of a character, for example, requires you to have to go through and change all mentions of this character elsewhere, just as a simple example. And this gets even more complex if you start changing more abstract things like a character's motivation. So already it's pretty clear that what an expert creator, like an author, does to make these types of changes isn't what crowdsourcing systems are kind of currently set up to do. Instead, experts use reflection to engage in a sort of conversation with their work. So when they reflect, they continually evaluate whether they like where they're going and whether it's getting them closer to their vision, which itself may be still kind of forming in their head. Um, so rather than following a static workflow to create, um, experts use reflection to kind of determine if they need to make changes and what their next step should be. So what would it look like for a crowd to collaboratively reflect on their work? Instead of developing a static workflow to accomplish a static goal, uh, we could break down complex work by reflecting on and revising high-level goals. So to do this, um, our thought was the crowd could loop between two phases. Um, first, they reflect on work so far to brainstorm and choose a high-level goal to pursue next. Then they uh, might revise the work by decomposing that, they, that goal that they chose into small, actionable tasks that guide what edits workers should make. And to explore that technique, um, we created this system called Mechanical Novel. Uh, for writing purely crowdsourced short fiction stories uh, integrated into Mechanical Turk. So um, in this system, the crowd starts by creating a first draft in response to a story prompt. Um, and though this first draft is usually not super great, this allows the crowd to set an initial rough direction for a story's idea. So here we start off with the story prompt, the hot air balloon, where a boy accidentally flies to a city in the sky. And the crowd write, writes a short story, um, one paragraph at a time, and uses votes to kind of pick the best text for each uh, section. Next, the crowd can start to reflect. So to do this, we ask workers to critique the story. Um, using a simple feedback structure we borrowed from the D School at Stanford where uh, the worker writes something that they liked, something that they wished was, uh, was different, and a speculative what if that offers a possible change the story could make next. We use these generated what if uh, statements as candidates for the crowd's next goal for the story. So here workers have offered a few different changes like what if we could learn a little bit about um, Malcolm, who's the main character in the story, or what if we could expand the ending so that Malcolm gets to the, explore the, uh, the cloud city. The crowd then votes to select one of these options as the main high-level goal for work. 
And so let's say that the cloud votes to expand the story's ending, so Malcolm can explore the cloud city when he lands there. The crowd then can start their revised phase. So after picking this high-level goal, the crowd votes for which story, uh, sections of the story needs to change in order to achieve that goal, along with specific suggestions for uh, what those changes should be. And so here, uh, the crowd makes a few votes, um, indicating that most workers think that you know, uh, the last paragraph maybe needs to change in order to achieve this goal of expanding the ending that uh, the crowd had selected earlier. Uh, and some options workers have written for expanding the ending is to have Malcolm exit, exit the balloon and explore, or maybe to write in a villain that Malcolm has to defeat before he can leave. Uh, workers then vote among these suggestions, so let's say that workers think that Malcolm should get out of the hot air balloon to take a look around. The suggestions that get the most votes become microtasks that ask workers to edit the text for a particular section um, by acting as specific instructions for how a section should change. And so at this step, uh, workers see a request to incorporate Malcolm getting out of the hot air balloon into this last paragraph. And once these edits are made, the workers, uh, workers can then vote for the best version of edits, and this ends the revision phase of work. And that completes one round of reflection and revision. Um, the process then repeats, allowing the crowd to choose a new goal and revise the story again, um, maybe this time tackling perhaps a different goal. So in this way, the crowd is able to determine a high-level goal for themselves, which becomes a measuring stick against which all workers can see if their contributions are doing the right thing and fitting in with other people's work, um, all without the need for a core leader to coordinate everything. Uh, and with this system, our hypothesis was that allowing the crowd to revise their goals as they generate creative work um, would maybe result in better creative outcomes than approaches that do not allow for ref uh, reflection. Um, so to look at this, I ran two studies. Um, the first was a benchmark study to see whether, um, first off, if mechanical novel would be able to de detect and fix problems that we kind of artificially introduced to a short story. Um, and the second uh, study was to see if mechanical novel would be able to write a short story from scratch uh, and to look at the quality of the stories that get written. Um, and both of these studies had two experimental conditions. Um, the mechanical novel condition, which used the system I just described to write stories, and uh, a control condition, which represented a typical crowdsourcing workflow where workers jump straight into voting um, how to edit a story and jump straight into making edits um, and do not choose a high-level goal. Um, and workers who participated in these studies were randomly assigned to participate in one of these conditions. So first, in the benchmark study, uh, with this we wanted to just get a sense of what uh, mechanical novel strengths and weaknesses were and to see if it was something that we you know, wanted to move forward with, if this strategy was uh, worth uh, developing further. Um, so we started out with a short story written by um, Sarah, who was a master's student working on the mechanical novel uh, project, um, and also a really good writer. Uh, and she chose six common types of story problems, uh, ranging from low-level things like typos and grammar, uh, to high-level things like adding unnecessary characters. And using the original story as a base, she wrote six new stories, each introducing one of these six problems. Um, and so this gave us sort of a gold standard to work from as we knew exactly where and what the major problems were for each story and how we'd expect someone to fix them. We then ran mechanical novel and the control system over each of these 12 stories for uh, one revision round. And then we repeated all of that three times. Um, lastly, we looked at uh, workers' votes for which paragraphs to edit as well as uh, the actual edits that they made. Um, to paragraphs to determine how often workers were able to detect the problem present in the story, as well as how often crowd workers were able to actually fix the problem. Um, and so for this, just to kind of highlight the most interesting findings from, uh, from this, we found that uh, mechanical novel was more likely to identify uh, the correct problematic uh, story sections for uh, the abrupt ending problem and the extra characters problem, uh, while the control condition was better at detecting low-level issues like typos. Um, and both were equally good at detecting uh, sudden changes in the narrator's point of view. And uh, these findings also carried over to each system's strengths in fixing certain problems as well, uh, as mechanical novels seem to be better at fixing, fixing the abrupt ending, um, and uh, even though both systems were able to detect out-of-character dialogue, mechanical novel was better at fixing this issue. 
So already we kind of saw some evidence towards mechanical novel being strong at addressing high level problems with story and plot, while the control system uh, predictably seemed to be better at addressing low, lower level technical issues like spelling and grammar. So seeing how mechanical novel might differ from traditional crowdsourcing workflows seemed promising, so we wanted to see how mechanical novel would perform in writing a story from scratch. So to do this, we came up with five story prompts, ranging a variety of topics, uh, and from these, the crowd generated a first draft for each story, um, containing about sh uh, six short scenes of text. We then duplicated these first drafts so that the stories in the control condition and the mechanical novel condition started from the same base text. Uh, and then we then uh, ran each story through five rounds of revision, uh, again with mechanical novel starting out with a critique or reflection, um, and with the control condition skipping this critique reflection phase and jumping straight into choosing which sections of story to edit. In addition, uh, workers in both conditions who participated in revising the story text were optionally allowed to fill out uh, a short feedback form to indicate what they thought was difficult or easy about making edits. Uh, and once stories were written, to evaluate stories for quality, we asked um, 215 Mechanical Turk workers who had not worked on any of the story writing tasks to compare the control and mechanical uh, novel versions for one of the story prompts. Uh, and we asked these Turkers to choose which story they thought um, was better in terms of several dimensions. For example, which story has better imagery or which story has better story structure. Uh, and finally, we did an analysis of um, all the story edits, critiques made, how tasks were decomposed by workers, as well as feedback we received from workers to look for themes and what workers saw as problems and how they attempted to fix these problems. So in the end, uh, over 400 Mechanical Turk tasks and 200 unique workers later, we ended up with 10 stories, five that were revised by the control system and five that were revised by a mechanical novel. Um, stories took about 11 days to go through five rounds of revision on average. Um, and again, these were short stories, so stories uh, were about 600 to 1,000 words long. Um, so overall, we did find that readers uh, liked stories written by mechanical novel better. Um, and to impact this, we found several interesting differences between mechanical novel and control stories. So first, we found that mechanical novel stories had significantly more developed plots. Um, readers rated mechanical novel stories as having more complete story arcs with clearer beginning, middles, and ends. Um, readers also rated mechanical novel stories as having significantly more uh, original and interesting central story ideas, uh, which is interesting considering that um, mechanical novel and control stories all started from the same base first draft. Uh, and the blue elephant story that was written by each system is kind of a, a good example of how a mechanical novel was able to create a better story arc. So in the original story that was written in the first draft, uh, a young girl realizes that her stuffed elephant is gone. Uh, she looks all over for it and is reunited with it at the end and finds that it has come to life. In the control version, workers attempted to motivate this, the main character search by describing her relationship with the elephant um, and tried to add a reason for the elephant's disappearance. So a bit of an improvement, um, but uh, could be better. In the mechanical novel version, uh, in contrast, uh, it starts out with a description of how uh, the main character received the elephant from her grandmother, which was the same doll that her recently deceased mother had when she was a little girl. And workers tied, uh, also tied this idea back into the ending, which reveals that uh, the main character's love for her grandmother was what brought her blue elephant stuffed animal to life, creating a specific theme that threads through the whole story and brings it together. Second, we found that mechanical novels seem to focus workers' efforts towards improving the narrative. Um, it seems that uh, workers in the control condition spent more of their effort fixing grammar and spelling compa compared to mechanical novel workers. In contrast, uh, mechanical novel stories were rated as having better imagery and description and writing style. Um, and this focus on uh, fleshing out the story itself was also corroborated by the analysis we did on the types of edits that workers made to each story, where we found that workers in the mechanical novel condition made significantly more edits that expanded on describing characters, while uh, workers in the control condition trended more uh, towards making more edits related to fixing grammar and spelling. So for example, in um, the control version of another story called John Doe, uh, which is a story about a man who finds himself in heaven. 
uh, started out like this, a very straight uh, forward description of the main character surroundings. The mechanical novel story, however, uses first person voice to narrate the main character's thoughts uh, and feelings as they try to process an unfamiliar place. Lastly, we found that mechanical novel allowed workers to coordinate their creative efforts. So after analyzing the feedback that workers wrote after writing or revising story text, we found that mechanical novel workers often justified their work by saying that they were following the suggestions established by other workers, meaning that workers were uh, working with others to achieve this high level goal. Uh, workers in the control condition, on the other hand, trended towards being more likely to try and focus the story's direction themselves. Um, and justify, uh, they were more likely to justify their work by critiquing the story as a whole. So by this time, you're probably curious as to, one of, uh, as to what one of these stories actually looked like. So I'll walk through the control and mechanical novel version of one of the stories workers wrote during this study. Um, this particular story was uh, kind of a film noir type story titled Number 16 and was about a serial killer whose target suddenly disappears. So the initial first draft of the story, as you might expect, was filled with inconsistencies. Uh, for example, the first paragraph starts out with a major plot twist where the to be victim actually catches the main character, the serial killer, following her and points a gun at him. But the next paragraph continues as if that hadn't happened, um, describing the serial killer as waiting patiently to make his next move. Uh, but later on in the story, the point of view changes from the serial killer to the victim suddenly drawing from the plot twist idea earlier on in the story and starts narrating the victim's thoughts as she tries to hunt down the serial killer instead. But then the story ends with the serial killer maybe killing the victim? It's sort of unclear and that's kind of how it ends. In the control version of the story, workers were able to remove this early plot twist and uh, change the ending so that the victim does turn the tables on the uh, serial killer, but by fixing these issues, ended up removing much of the story arc, resulting in sort of a plot, uh, a monotone plot and an ending that seems kind of random and um, from out of nowhere. In contrast, in the mechanical novel version of the story, uh, like the control version, changes the ending so that the tables are turned on the killer, but also uh, removes a plot, uh, and also removes the early plot twist from the beginning. Uh, but rather than moving the plot twist altogether, it's transformed into, uh, instead into foreshadowing for later parts of the plot. In addition, mechanical novel workers also added backstories for the serial killer and the victim to explain why they're doing what they're doing. Um, just another example of how mechanical novels seem to focus more on expanding characters. So in summary, uh, we found that workers in the mechanical novel condition focused on higher level story problems than workers in the control condition uh, and were less likely to try and hijack the direction of the story when contributing work. Uh, workers were able to select reasonable high level goals for themselves and use these goals to uh, break down the task of revising a short story into coordinated actions. Okay, so the last project I'm gonna talk about is Mosaic. Um, so where Ensemble and Mechanical Novel specifically looked at translating certain expert creative practices for use in crowd work, uh, with Mosaic, I wanted to look at expert mindsets. Uh, failure, struggle, unexpected setbacks, uh, new inspirations are all part of creative work. So how can we encourage this in the design of social systems for creators? So to set the stage for where this idea is coming from, Online creative communities today, like DeviantArt, Pixiv, or Dribbble, um, Behance, focus on uh, showcasing completed work, uh, creating a climate where uh, creators aim to produce work that is as impressive as possible to attract viewers and fans. Um, and this is a great opportunity to get feedback from others and look at examples of other people's really cool work. Um, and creators do try to capitalize this in lots of ways. Um, sometimes they carve out social spaces for sharing in progress work. Uh, they create and curate tutorials for each other uh, or organize events specifically for tackling creative challenges together. And this makes sense. Um, we already know from past literature that uh, on creativity that improving skills centers around uh, continually assessing, uh, assessing one's creative process based on feedback and exploratory experiments. So obviously many creators 
already know this, which is why they try to foster activities based around creative process. But despite these efforts to help each other in development and growth, creators find themselves having to compete against impressive finished work when uploading early or unfinished work to explain their processes to each other, uh, which may discourage people from participating in these activities. But what if creative communities were designed from the get-go to allow creators to share creative process as first-class content? So uh, rather than just sharing finished work, creators could uh, share in-progress snapshots of work to illustrate what they did and why. Um, by designing a social environment that rewards sharing early work, we may create better, uh, better opportunities for creators to not only learn specific techniques from each other, but also to enable them to reflect more effectively on their own work and on others' work. So to get a sense of how a community like this might compare against existing art communities, um, I first interviewed 10 artists about the uh, art communities that they already use to share their work. Um, and overall, interviewees said that they do mainly use existing sites like DeviantArt, Facebook, uh, Tumblr to share, uh, to share their artwork for the purpose of getting as much exposure as they can. And uh, while many of them have posted kind of works in progress in the past uh, on these sites, it was uh, mostly to serve um, kind of a social purpose, basically like, hey, here's what I'm up to right now kind of thing um, to update people who might be following them on these social sites. Um, and they did this because technical or social barriers such as um, having to go through a tedious process of concatenating a bunch of uh, pictures into a single image so that they can upload it, um, or being seen as spammy for posting too many pictures of the same artwork at different stages, um, prevented them from posting substantial content more often. So uh, with these barriers that artists mentioned, that these artists mentioned in mind, um, I designed and launched a Mosaic, uh, an online social art platform where the primary method of sharing artwork is to upload multiple images illustrating the creative process, uh, the steps an artist took to create a piece of artwork. So uh, just to illustrate how it works, for example, Say we have a user on Mosaic named uh, Cookie Cat who's just started a still life oil painting of their favorite dessert. Um, and they might create a work in progress representing their first step, um, drawing a sketch. And this, uh, this work in progress would include a description of any reasoning behind their step, such as maybe why they chose a certain kind of subject matter or how they chose a certain visual composition, uh, maybe other things that they tried before settling on this particular sketch. Related works in progress are grouped together in a project which represents a single creative work. Um, so our user here might create a project uh, representing their still life uh, painting uh, and adding works in progress representing stages of the development of the artwork from sketch to maybe like underpainting or blocking colors and so on. Uh, other social features enable artists to view what others are doing. Um, so the homepage consists of a feed of recent activity and shows comments, uh, new projects, and new updates to existing projects. Uh, you can also search for project by keyword or maybe even by a certain uh, specific type of uh, work in progress like sketch, which would bring up all projects that have that uh, particular step as part of its process. Um, all of this put together allows creators to focus on sharing knowledge with each other. Um, so say we have another user named uh, Donut Dog who happens to see that Cookie Cat has recently added an update to a painting very similar to the, uh, a kind of painting that um, this other user is thinking about, and so they click to take a look. And they're surprised by uh, Cookie, uh, Cookie Cat's use of an underpaint to black out shadows and light early on in the process, which is a technique they might not be familiar with. And so they favor this project to subscribe to this project's updates in the future. Um, and they might also leave a comment thanking uh, Cookie Cat for teaching them something new. And so in this way, by centering users' interactions around sharing process, Mosaic is able to unlock a number of uh, useful interactions between creators, including being able to compare your own creative process with others, learn new techniques, and provide feedback in a specific, uh, specific way. So my hypothesis with Mosaic was that uh, sharing creative processes is difficult for creators because existing creative communities are designed to reward sharing high quality creative outcomes. 
Instead, an alternative design for community shared, uh, designed around sharing works in progress may encourage creators to share early work and learn from each other. So uh, in order to understand the difficulties artists face when seeking or sharing works in progress online, uh, we conducted a field deployment of Mosaic over the course of four weeks um, and invited users from hobbyist art communities to use Mosaic to host uh, snapshots of works in progress of whatever they happen to be working on. And during the, stu uh, the study period, we logged all community activity, including the creation of projects, works in progress, snapshots, project favorites, user follows, and comments. And um, finally, at the end of the study period, we conducted semi-structured interviews with 10 of the most active Mosaic users uh, as measured by their commenting and uh, project posting activity um, to understand uh, whether posting works in project, uh, progress affected their creative practice and how they interacted with other Mosaic users. So by the end of the study period, um, a total of 46 users created 69 projects with projects containing an average of about five works in progress each and receiving an average of about two comments. And there was an interesting range in the types of images that people would upload. So while many people uh, uploaded kind of a typical step-by-step -step of images, like in this example, um, other, uh, other people posted photos of their work environment and their tools, um, or included initial exploratory sketches that weren't ultimately used in the final piece. And speaking with interview participants, uh, we did find that Mosaic was able to provide a significantly different exper uh, experience from existing art communities that they frequent. Uh, first, participants described posting about their process as a useful way for them to reflect on their own work. Um, a few artists, including um, this participant, pointed out that uh, documenting their process on Mosaic would be useful to their future selves to help them remember that um, this beautiful painting that they're so proud of actually did start out kind of terrible, and so they shouldn't feel sad about a terrible start to a new project. Secondly, um, the works in progress on Mosaic seem to allow other creators to pinpoint the intent of the creator posting uh, artwork, leading to informed feedback from the community as a whole. Um, participants found this useful as this meant that they could use other uh, users' comments as a mirror to kind of help them reflect on whether or not they were able to achieve what they intended. Uh, posting works in progress also implicitly enforced a community of uh, reciprocity. So many artists, like this participant, mentioned that a principle of fairness or a desire to give back to the community drove their motivation to create tutorials or write feedback for others. But enforcing this fairness can be quite difficult on existing sites like DeviantArt. Um, in contrast, many participants describe both uh, posting works in progress and posting comments as teaching opportunities on Mosaic. Um, in other words, creators ended up framing the Mosaic projects that they uploaded as kind of gifts of knowledge to the community, which was the same mechanism through which they received feedback and help. Lastly, we found that Mosaic allowed artists to feel less apprehensive about sharing their work. Um, so on existing sites, the goal uh, is to compete with others for views and comments. Um, in contrast, Mosaic-centered user activity around making updates on progress of artwork creating an environment where sharing process was something everyone else was doing and making people focus less on the final outcome and more on sharing kind of their journey. So in summary, uh, Mosaic demonstrates some of the benefits of designing creativity support tools and communities around outcomes rather than, uh, outcomes other than traditional success, such as experimentation, exploration, or maybe even failure. Um, these are all clearly important parts of the creative process and creating such tools can, uh, might help expand the ways in which social systems and other technology can support creators. Okay, so in this talk I presented three projects, Ensemble, Mechanical Novel, and Mosaic. Um, and, so, and through these projects I explored how adapting existing creative practices by experts can help us design new kinds of crowdsourcing workflows and social computing systems for accomplishing collaborative, open-ended creative tasks. Um, these projects also touch on specific design patterns that came out of uh, embedding expert practices into social systems. So for example, using constraints to help collaborators strike a balance between free creativity and working in sync with others, uh, letting reflection drive collaborative action to allow crowds to work together flexibly, and aiming to create a social environment that embraces process rather than just trying to act as a gallery. 
And these contributions open up a number of interesting avenues for future work. Um, so first, we could explore uh, other designs for crowdsourcing systems that allow crowd workers to direct their own work. Um, for example, uh, orienting work around high-level goals like we did in the mechanical novel may be great in early stages of writing a story when ideas might still be developing, but in later stages when you might actually want to focus more on cleaning up spelling and grammar and sentences that don't flow well, a more traditional crowdsourcing system may actually be more helpful. Uh, and so it would be interesting to see if a crowdsourcing system could maybe dynamically adjust to what degree it focused on high-level or low-level work and see how that affects the creative output of the crowd. Second, um, a major area of research has drawn on the fact that uh, the crowd is physically spread apart in many different locations. Um, and so rather than relying on uh, ad hoc behavior or a central governing figure directing work as is common in uh, these cases, we might be able to use the strategies defined in mechanical novel to uh, self-organize, for example, maybe citizen reporting or humanitarian efforts where it, it, cases where central direction may not be readily available. Um, such as in a sudden natural disaster. And lastly, uh, we could expand the design direction we explored with Mosaic um, and perhaps generate a new design space of creativity support tools and communities designed around sharing process. Um, Mosaic was just kind of the tip of the iceberg here. Um, you could add on to this by thinking about a community that allows creators to maybe create techniques into personal toolboxes or libraries or imagine uh, communities where people explicitly showcase their failures rather than their successes. Um, thinking beyond just traditional success uh, can open opportunities for new ways uh, creators might be able to help support each other. Um, okay, and that's pretty much it uh, for my talk, so thanks so much for listening. Um, I'd be happy to take any questions now, um, and yeah, thank you. Just raise your hand and we'll bring a mic. Thank you. On the mechanical novel uh, experiments, did you notice if people's styles became more similar as they cycled through the, the reflection and revision process? Oh, um, yeah, that's a good question. So actually, we, we're curious about whether or not there'd be some sort of like learning effect like as people participate in it more um, and when we looked at uh, like I guess how unique the users were across revisions it turned out that um, not a lot of people actually came back like it was, it was I was surprised also <laughs> like I thought like oh um, like because one of our suspicions was like oh maybe mechanical novels working better because like people keep coming back to it and like the same person is like writing story like story sections or something like that but it, they were all unique users um, which is kind of interesting so we didn't see that for that reason <laughs> Yeah. So the, the mosaic project sounds really interesting what you put it, you know, instead of just a gallery, it's more like a studio, getting to see into the studio. And I'm wondering, is, is it still active? Is it still running? Yeah, it's actually still up, um, and it's kind of funny because I, um, it's still up because I have sort of a, a pipe dream of like maybe turning it into something real someday, um, but so I've left it up, and I, but I haven't been able to do anything with it, but people keep uploading stuff, which is kind of crazy, so that's encouraging. <laughs> well, yeah, if you leave the door open, people keep coming in, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so I could try it, right? If I went home, I could try it, and I could get on and... Uh, yeah, um... I don't have a URL on these slides or anything, but um, I'll dig I around. Can. Okay. <laughs> thanks. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Hi. You mentioned that um, you uh, asked people in the mechanical novel. Uh, from the control group or the mechanical group. Mm -hmm. uh, did you feel like uh, one group enjoyed it more than the other? Or? Mm, that's a good question. Uh, you know, I'm not entirely sure. That wasn't something that we thought to look at. Um, I know, I can say that from just an overall perspective, when I was like 
going through a whole bunch of prototypes as a mechanical novel design um, and just like trying out like earlier versions of it, um, we ended up getting a lot of emails from workers saying like, oh, like let me know when you post new tasks and stuff. Like this is so like different from like all the usual tasks that I do, and I really like like I really like writing and like this is so interesting and stuff. So we got um, some emails like that kind of throughout the design process, but that was not something we like thought to scientifically compare, but that would be interesting. <laughs> okay, thank <Yeah>. you. <laughs> Oh, yes. I, I'm curious to hear more about, it seems that the processes you've picked are typically single author processes, mm. but for processes that exist like filmmaking and band, music bands and so on, those already exist as collaborative processes. Mm -hmm. How do you see, do, do you see trying to use that, this type of approach in already collaborative processes, mm -hmm. this kind of thing. Yeah, um, I think that would definitely be something I would like to expand more into. Um, I think I, uh, I started this from a space where I was interested in getting people who don't have a lot of expertise into collaborating together and create uh, creative stuff, which I think is maybe why, um, rather than looking at kind of existing collaborative uh, systems that already exist that kind of rely on the fact that the people who are part of this workflow are um, experts in kind of the particular part they're in charge of. Um, I kind of went the direction of, and that's definitely one direction I could have gone. Uh, instead, I kind of went the direction of like, hey, how does an expert kind of like deal with their own like thought processes and does that kind of translate, is that is it possible to translate that at all in, into a crowdsourcing workflow? Um, so I think I could have gone either way. I chose to kind of explore one direction First, but I think um, so, some of the other students in my lab are kind of exploring that other direction um, also. So um, that's something, definitely something that just as a group we kind of all talk about and think about. <laughs> uh, that's definitely a good point. <laughs> Any more questions? Great, let's thank the speaker one more time. Okay. Thank you.